Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And happy almost Valentine's Day. Sorry that I'm kind of in a weird spot in my house. This is my D&D &D area that we're kind of putting together. It's just where my computer is. And honestly, I need some notes for this. There's a lot of scientific stuff that I'm not gonna just remember off the top of my head. I did a lot of research for this video. So I, I have to have a script. So I didn't want to move my computer. So I am here. That being said, starting off with a disclaimer, just really, really, really quick is that I am not an expert. I just researched these like this week for this video. Um, it was hard to find a lot of this because there's not a lot of bugs uh, that are romantic by our standards. I mean romantic by our standards, by the way, not that these insects might feel attraction or love. I'm not trying to anth anthropomorphize anything. Um, this is just by our standards of romance. So, I will have a ton of links in the description below for you um, of where I got all this information and stuff like that. I think I have all of them saved, but if you have any questions about any of it and you can't find it in any of those papers, let me know. A lot of them are scientific papers. I try to find free ones for you to download if I could. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and just get right into the video. So when you think of Valentine's Day, you probably don't think of bugs. Other than love bugs, and oddly enough, we're not getting into them in this video. So today, I have brought you five insects that in some way or another are romantic by our standards. Mostly monogamous or family-based is kind of what I was going for. So number one on that list are termites, which surprised me. I'm sorry if you can hear all that in the background. Prim is going insane in her enclosure. I am so sorry. So most termites are a eusocial species, and they produce full sibling offspring throughout their whole life. As newly emerged adults, they will choose their mate and they will be monogamous the rest of their lives. While termite couples do live together for their whole lives, uh, queens of other eusocial species like ants, bees, and wasps don't necessarily do this. Don't get me wrong, they do mate for life, but the male usually doesn't live long enough to participate in creating the colony, unlike termites. And the queens do not remate after this with any other individual. Instead, they store sperm from their original mate and can go on living and reproducing for years or even decades. Now, mating for life is already pretty rare in the insect community, but what about parenting? And not just any parenting, biparenting or co-parenting. Biparental care is extremely rare in insects and is pretty exclusive to some beetles, earwigs, and like I said before, termites and cockroaches. But the dung beetle is one of the most recognizable species that co-parents their young. Oddly enough, some species of dung beetle, who are solitary by the way, come together to raise their young until they exit their larval stage. And oddly enough, the male beetle plays a huge part in offspring provisioning. And this varies, it's so cool. In studies, male dung beetles performed more parental actions when paired with a small female, and small females more than large females. And what's even crazier is that males actually coordinated the care with the females in taking care of the offspring instead of acting independently, which is insane for a beetle. <laughs> So dung beetles co-parent for a little while and termites mate for life, but is there an insect that does both? Surprisingly, yes, and it goes beyond just the two parental caretakers. So best beetles, also known as dead wood beetles, actually are monogamous, do mate for life, raise their young together, and have an intricate family system in their colony. Many species of best beetles live in family groups inside of rotting wood. These family groups, these family groups consist of mature parents, egg, larva, pupa, and newly emerged immature and mature adults. And the coolest thing is the newly emerged immature and mature older siblings actually help in the care of the young. These beetles are observed to have four types of parental care. These types are the care and protection of eggs, excavating galleries, feeding the larva, and pupil cell building. And best beetles aren't the only family-oriented bugs out there. While the Taiwanese giant wood roach isn't quite as intricate as the best beetles, they do still settle down together in a monogamous relationship and raise their young together. But they do have a really odd way of showing that they are bonded. These roaches are monogamous, and once they have coupled, they will never leave the rotting log they call home, nor will they ever encounter other potential mates. 
Quickly after they settle down, they have to start caring for their young. They've been observed guarding their babies from potential predators and even feeding them from their mouth parts like birds. But it kind of gets weird. A new study published on January 25th, 2021 shows that this rare monogamous mating is solidified by minor acts of cannibalism. The roaches were observed munching each other's wings down to the nubs once they've moved into their log. They seem to take breaks as needed and don't seem bothered by this odd ritual. Now, as weird as they might be, these are all oddly romantic by our standards for insects. But what if I told you that there is a monogamous insect that has a bad habit of cheating? Most burying beetles are monogamous, however, the male sometimes has other things in mind. So how it all starts is the males and females will bond with their one mate, and they will go find a carcass to lay their eggs in. However, conflict ensues when the burying beetles find a carcass that is too big for just one female to uh, fill. So paired males on large carcasses will in fact try to find another mate. He does this by releasing pheromones. Now the female beetle that he is paired with obviously does not like this. She will physically try to interfere with him releasing those pheromones. This does include my favorite tactic, which is simply knocking him over. And on that note, that is all I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you learned something or at least were entertained by this. Don't forget all of my sources will be linked in the description down below, as well as my accounts, including my main Instagram account, my art Instagram account, and my Facebook group. So if you're interested in any of those, please go check those out in the description below. The sources will kind of be on the top and then my links will be towards the bottom. So just to make it a little bit easier to navigate, there's gonna be a lot of links. Don't forget to like this video for the algorithm and comment down below which one of these bugs was your favorite and most romantic. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Saturday around noon Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't remember that. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye.